first time doing live. Let's see how this works. Now, how do I view stuff? Uh, two viewers. Well, that doesn't help if I can't see, hear people talking. No, it doesn't. I'm so sorry for y'all on here watching and I can't see anything. This probably is not the best idea. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> hmm. Hmm. So I guess put your questions in one of the chat rooms and I'll look at it. So if you're on this one, put it in the main. And if you're on e Ecofin, put it um, in the trade in the trading floor and I'll try to answer all the questions. Um, I wish I knew how to see comments on um, the YouTube exactly how that works, but I've never done it before. So... Sorry, my fault. Um. <laughs> Present to everyone. How about you show me how to use stupid application? Oh, here we go, chat. <gasps> chat. Can y'all see? Can, can y'all chat here? That'd be cool to know. I don't think so. I don't think that's how it works. Oh, it's group chat. <laughs> Can we clarify the 10% criteria also what to look for when it's not in a 10% play? Um, absolutely. So let's look. I'll go to a five-day, five-minute chart just to see the overall progression. Um, when you're looking at a 10% play, you're looking for a continuation play. So I'm trying to find one um, that we can base it off of at the moment. Well, I guess Apple here would be one where you see here where we have this trait. We have the trading range of the day. Uh, for instance, this time it's 174.50 to 178.24. So this is our trading range and we close in the bottom percentage of that range. So now we have our support for that day. So hopefully it consolidates around a certain pow powerful Powerful long-term price point, which in the R instance right here is one seven or one sixty-nine. It closed below that. So then you draw your support where the low of that day is. What you're looking for the next day is during pre-market and after-market for it to have dropped below the previous day's support and it's starting to act as resistance. That's what you're looking at. You want to see it act as re resistance and start to drop some. Usually in the morning when it starts to drop after this acting like resistance, then you'll see a quick spike up in the morning um, because of short sellers who are exiting their positions. Um, because when you short sell, you have to sell the stock first. And then when you want to close your position, you have to buy it, which causes an increase in buying, which causes it to go up, and then the flush through. So then, so then you'll use the pre-market lows as your support. Um, if this is the 10% continuation play to the downside and you'll see a push through that bottom level and then you'll see a continuation or a flush down to the downside or at least that's what you will see mo most of the time on a 10% play. So when you're playing it, make sure that during pre-market and aftermarket, it's holding below the previous day's support if it's down or re re resistance if it's on the way up. Um, let's see if I get out of this. I should be able to show y'all. I don't know what exactly it is. Um, is this one? No, that's not one. I try to take pictures of good plays, but I don't always have the best plays. I think this is a 10% play here on Square. Um, <gasps> Twitter. Twitter is a good recent example. Sorry, well, I'm late on coming up with examples. Um, so Twitter. Oh, maybe it's not. Well, I guess here, here it was. Um, if you can see here, we have a trading range for the day in between. This is the high, um, and then this is the low. 
of the day. So we're trading range. We closed in the top portion of the range. This being our uh, resistance for the day during pre-market and, af and after market. We're jumping up above this resistance and we're holding. Um, and the same thing we see when it's to the downside, except to the upside, we see a slight push down. Um, usually test this previous support unless it's super high above it. Then we just have a small pullback and then we continue to run in the direction of the day. Now, how do you know when to enter? You enter above Again, if it's a continu if it's a continuation play to the upside, then then you're watching for a break above the pre market high, and you enter there, and that's when you see your run up. Um, again, this would this would be classified as a ten percent play to the downside um, at night, um, like when you're looking at it here. But then when you notice that it's not, um, you know, closing below here, then um, you, we would know that the ten percent play is invalid, and that we're moving on. Um, and just example, so like here is another example um, that we're looking at. This is the top percentage of the play. Um, the problem with this one is that this is our high for the day, and we're having. I would have not played to this for the sole reason that we did not get up above this resistance. Um, I mean, yes, it did work, but not for the whole day. And I think primarily because we could not get above this resistance, you want to see it get above that re that resistance point. I think AMD maybe also knows another good one. I lied. I don't know. That would be that's the best I can explain it. So you have to go to YouTube, click live video to see your comments. Thank you. Let's check that out. YouTube live stream. Okay, cool. Yeah. Um, yeah, still not. Events. Sorry, guys. I'm wasting your time with this. Let's see. Live control room. <gasps> Maybe. Maybe. Oh, 16 watching. That's pretty cool. Never picture that. Uh, total. Oh, hey. I wish there was a way to display it somewhere else, but look at that. Hey, hey, hey. What's up, Austin? Let's see. I guess y'all can now start putting your questions here instead. Um, but I'll also go back and look at this. So the other questions we had here is the 10% discuss that. Um, and now I, and now I can see these, uh, Tesla. All right, let's check out Tesla. Um, thanks for put, putting up with, uh, me and my failure to know how YouTube works, <laughs> but I'm learning Tesla. I mean, YouTube is not my forte trading is that's why. <laughs> trading but um so i guess if you want to know about tesla then i guess uh, the first place i always like to start is this so if you can see here we've always had resistance here the 380 level up to 389 is the highest here so i just watch for a reversal here um and as you can see here when we start to reverse uh, around this level volume starts to pick up and then die out pick up and it starts to die out so as we can see here, volume is starting to pick up. I'm starting to die out. So just watch a rejection around 380, 389 as your resistance point, and then so, so slowly watch these supports as you're breaking through. So when you're day trading and you see that we're near the 360 level, you could trade a put, trade the break below 360, the break below 340, the break below 320, 300. And if you can tell, these are all at $20 increments because whole numbers are very important when you're playing large name stocks. But let's look at it on an intraday time frame. Um, and I'm sorry that my voice is bad, but like I'm a little sick at the moment. I'm not sick. My voice just hates me. Um, but I wanted to do this live stream because I had a lot of people asking for it. So I hope y'all can ask some good questions, make this worth both of our times. <laughs> but like Tesla is not my favorite stock to play because it's too choppy. There's never one clear movement in, in any direction. So I don't personally don't play Tesla, but I know people who do. Um, but again, that's what I see for it on our perfect uh on our one day one hour time frame um so let's let's go back make sure no one else posted in here make sure no one else spoke it on ecofin um uh all a lot of questions are under a dollar can you explain what contracts to pick so we don't lose money on theta or volatility that's a very good question i know i made multiple videos of it but i'll address it again um, so let's see I just want to check here what do you think of Apple um, 
All right, before I get to these, I want to do that last comment in the ecofin, and then I'll stay with uh, the YouTube comments. Um, so when I'm looking at this, um, the options table, um, I like to stay within three days, two to three days from exp expiration, hopefully longer. I specifically like four days, like especially when you have a variety, like a pick, like in Spy. Um, I like to pick like uh, four days out. Um, when, when you're playing stuff like Spy, the volume is always there, so I don't have to necessarily worry about volume, and I'm not affected by Theta as much. Um, now, if you really don't want to be affected by Theta, you want to go out more than 45 days. So, for instance, the 25th of January, Theta is very minimal. Um, and then after 45 days, the uh, theta starts to draw. It's it's like an exp exponential curve. So it, theta starts increasing slowly but surely. Then when it hits 45 days, it starts to curve up rapidly. This being the last day of expiration, if that makes sense to you visually. Um, so I like to stay uh, within four, like three to four days away from expiration. So if I was to trade spy tomorrow, it would be the 17th um, of the. December X expiration I'd be trading and then if I was trading an, another stock especially on Friday I trade the next week expiration on Friday I always trade the next week exp expiration that's a rule and when I don't I tend to lose because even if you're trading same day X expirations and you're right but the stock is a bit choppy then you lose money on theta and not on the direction um, so on Fridays I play the next week and if you're playing spy which has multiple expirations then I play at least four three to four days out if that makes sense so that I'm not hurt too much by theta but I also get the percentage gains not the full like not as much percentage as let's say a same day ex expiration but I still get like 50% gains if it's a decent move all right um, scarcity um, message retractive. What about trading SPX options for tomorrow? All right. So if you trade SPX, I def I definitely think that SPX is a good thing to trade. I started off trading SPX like before I started to trade SPY. That's when I was trading with a little bit of a larger size account. Um, <laughs> look, like my lines are still here and they're still valid because uh, this is what I used to trade over and over. If if you look at the beginning of of my trading. Um, what I would recommend, though, is I started trading SPY because it seems like a lot of people on here um, have uh, have smaller accounts. So SPY contracts are definitely a lot cheaper because everything on SPX, like the price of the stock, is 10 times what it is on SPY. So the, so the contracts are also 10 times the price. Um, so like as you can see here, they're all priced in the 900s, and even the same-day expectations are priced so much. The problem with it, though, is the spread. If you can see here, um, everything is times 10. So if you have a two cent spread on SPY, you now have a 20 cent spread on SPX. So if you like, if you're going to buy it, you're, you're going to buy it here around 140. And then if you want to immediately sell it, you're, you're going to be selling it at 155, thus a loss without it even going any direction. So uh, when you're trading SPX, just make sure you're trading the, the long moves or, or you're shorting it, um, which means you're making money on theta. Um, but now chart wise, um, it's going to move the same exact as spy because of the same thing. Um, so basically you're asking about spy and I think that we're getting into some neutral territory here where we need to see either a break above, um, the high or low of this, of this day, because as, as you can see here, we set in an, an indecision candle here. So we're looking for a, a reversal, but we couldn't reverse and we're almost putting like a hammer here. Like we should start reversing to, to the downside, but the market's like, uh, I don't want to drop that far just yet. Um, so watch for the break above the previous high and lows of this candle to determine if we're going back down or back up. It's definitely we're in an uncertain time when it comes to SPX and SPY. Um, I really need to find an easier way to get to these YouTube comments. All right. Your voice is satisfying. No, no, it's not. My voice sucks right now. Uh, if you have a day trade account, what indicators do you use or do you just play support resistance lines? So, uh, Gunther, first off, thanks for helping me figure out how to view the chat. Um, and second, um, I use support and re resistance lines um, mainly, and I also use VWAP. Um, as you can see here, v VWAP is like the only thing I, I have on my chart. Um, and then when we start to make like new highs and new lows, I will add RSI just to see if I can see some R RSI divergence, but it's not something I need or, or necessarily like to have all the, all the time. What I really need is support and resistance lines, um, and I need my VWAP. Um, 
as you can see here, I would have pulled this up when I saw that it was making a new high of day, and I would have noticed uh, nothing. But usually, if it's making a new low of day, and you can, um, you know, figure out if it's going to have an RSI divergence, but it's not my go-to. Uh, VWAP and strategies is what I do uh, primarily all the time because I like to watch for those 10% plays because if you haven't seen them, they're literally the easiest thing to trade, uh, like ever. <laughs> um, well, at least in my opinion, um, if you can see here, SPY dipped. So we're, we're looking for a break below this point and break below pre-market support, right? We break below that and it flushes out. And it's just a simple trading strategy to, to, to look out for. And it's the ones that I trade in. I, I really only need VWAP and my resistance lines for that. Um, what else? <clears throat> what do you think of Apple? Are all triangle patterns continuation patterns regardless of the types of triangle? No. Oh, are all triangle patterns continuation patterns? No, you have a sending trot, trot triangle, which is where you have the solid with the solid top, and then you have the high the the, high, the higher lows that are new. Um, let's just go here. Um, triangle patterns, <laughs> stocks, because it's so professional, but it's true. All the information you want to ever view is online. That's how I learned. <laughs> Um, let's see if we can pull up some good examples. This is the triangle that fails that. Okay, so you have a symmetrical triangle um, where you have a move in the previous direction and then it tends to bounce back and, and forth and it can break either way. Like it can break to the upside or downside. Like that's the scary part of a symmetrical triangle. So you just have to plan for each side. Um, but again, more times than not, I don't know the exact number. I should do the math on it. But more times than not, if it's coming from an uptrend and you are consolidating into a symmetrical triangle, then it's going to be a break to the upside. However, I can't say that because there are plenty, plenty of times where I traded one when it went up, it consolidated into, into a triangle, and then it broke to the downside and, and, and I made money on puts. So I can't say it's all the time, but way more times than not, it's a continuation play, um, especially on a symmetrical triangle. Um, but not all the time because as you can see here, this is an example of we're going up, we start to, to consolidate into a descending tri triangle, but again, descending means that it's going to break down to the downside because we have a solid uh, support line. Um, but this is this is a reversal pattern, right? How you see that the, tri the triangle was used to reverse uh, the stock. Um, so not every single time, just more times than not. Because look, here's another example where we go down, we have an ascending triangle, but then again, it is an, an ascending triangle. Um, that means up, but still it's re it's reversing and it's not going the same exact way. Jeez, my voice must suck for y'all, I'm sorry. Um, what's a good platform for paper trading that is real time and corresponds to real life stocks? I don't think there is a, li a live one. You would you could either do a demo account on tradingview.com tradingview.com um, or open a TD Ameritrade account and have access to their paper trading. Uh, you can open just a pay, uh, just a paper trade trading account or an account that is associated with the paper trading. Like once you open an account, then you automatically get the paper trading with it. Um, but now I don't think any of them are in real time. They're just like five to ten minutes till till. Five to ten minutes de de delayed on the market status, but it's not real time um, on it. Now let's look at Apple real quick. And if y'all don't have any more questions, then I may tune out. But it's up to y'all to ask questions because I want to stay up too late. But I will if y'all have good questions. Apple. Let's see. First thing to do is start off with the one day. So we can see the overall time frame. So we dropped down to the support. Oh, no, we didn't. We dropped down to this support. Sorry, I haven't charted out this recently. I've been busy and sick but what's new um so we're looking here or we're starting to bounce okay this is a previous area of support so that means it's going to be a previous area of resistance now Put, putting in a doji um which is an end decision candle i can see it start to to, to reverse to, to the downside here at least back down to test 165 as support so if we start to re to reverse here and ha Owl goes back down to 165. That will not surprise me. But if you want to get above this, make sure you get above 174, 175 with strength if you want to continue going, going to the upside. But again, SPY is not looking great, and Apple is 2% of SPY. So if SPY cannot get up, Apple will definitely not get up, and vice versa. So I see SPY starting to drop some, and so Apple will, de will definitely start to drop some. So that's just something to, to look out for. 
Um, TD has real time. Yeah, real time. But is it real time pay, pay, paper trading? I'm not too sure. I don't know the answer for that. Um, maybe you could be right. Um, let's see what else. I don't use VWAP. Curious how you use that indicator. What does it indicate to you? Well, it's a moving average with volume incor incorporated. So it's a volume weighted average price. So it's like using an exponential moving average that incorporates volume. Um, on big on big on big name stocks, it's very um, prevalent. So if we go to I don't know what are we going to go. Oh, I guess we're on Apple. Let's go to Apple. Um, there's just uh, I'm trying to find a good example. It's just it's very clear that most stocks when it's trending respects the WAP. Um, I wish I could fully show you good examples, but I can't. But when a stock is in play, it respects VWAP a lot. Um, it acts as support and it acts as a resistance. It's basically, basically like a mini support and re, re, resistance line on the stock. For instance, here you see that we're bouncing and, and we're holding it and then we break below. Um, I can't give you a for sure reason. I just personally like to, to, like, like to use it, but it's not necessary. Um, and I wish I could show you a good example, but I can't. So as you can see here on Amazon, we went and we bounced off VWAP. And then when we broke through, we came up and retested and we pushed back through. Um, so as you can see here, we're pushing and we're getting rejected. Then we get rejected. Then we go above and we test that support. And then we break right back through. Just on big name stocks, VWAP tends to be an, an important end, end indicator. Um, I don't know. I just personally like it. Uh, wrong, I'm not going there. Like for Facebook today, there was an ascending triangle, but it broke to the downside, so I wasn't sure why. Say, so, yeah, let's take a look at that. Facebook. Do, 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 do. Oh, I see it. Come back. Um, <clears throat> so, ascending triangle. If you're classifying this as an ascending triangle, I don't know what you are. Um, Please comment if this is the ascending triangle you were talking about. This is a symmetrical triangle, uh, in my opinion. Um, I just want to see if that is what you're talking about. Uh, Ryan, how do you plan for trades if it doesn't follow 10 percent plays? I'll go over that next. If you request real-time quotes, I'm, okay, cool. So you can re request it. What do you guys mean by 10 percent plans? Can you explain the strategy for newbies? Okay. Um, for Gunther, uh, I have two videos explaining it in depth, and at the beginning of this video, this live stream, I, I also explained it, um, what exactly it is. Um, it's a continuation play from the previous day, so either go on YouTube or wait for the live stream over or go backtrack to, to look at that, um, just because my voice does not have the strength to explain it again, and that's not what he's talking about. Uh... I don't, I don't see an ascending triangle. An ascending triangle is where we have solid re resistance, and then we have starting to make a higher low. So we're going to bounce between here. We're going to make our way to the upside, and we're going to hopefully break up to the upside. Um, I don't see a flat top. I just want to call that a flat top, but then these tops didn't match that top, so that's not an ascending triangle. Um. <clears throat> I should have brought water. My voice is killing me. But what's new? My my body hates me. All right. Um, so this is a symmetrical triangle. So you can see the volume starts to die out as we consolidate, and then volume picks up as on the breakout. That's the way a triangle should work. Again, it's a symmetrical triangle, so it could break out any direction. Um, you can see that we have the breakout to the downside, um, and that's why we have the continuation of the move. Um, let's see if he has. Oh wait, never mind. My fault. So Ryan, was it on Facebook or what exactly? So how would you trade this symmetrical triangle? Okay. So when you're tra trading a, sym a symmetrical triangle, um, basically I'm looking at you know I'm planning for both sides, right? So I know that for the day the open it opened right here. So I know that we're below the open, so I know that this is more of a bearish day. 
and we're heading up on this resistance line. So again, hindsight is 2020. So I can say, well, of course, this is a, a reversal because you know we're at this resistance point. But again, I may have not considered that at the time. I'm considering it now because I know. But if I was watching this form here and bouncing in between this, then I would have just waited for the breakout. Like I wouldn't like usually on ascending and descending triangles because I know which way it's going to break. I, I enter here in before the triangle. I would have waited for the breakout below. Like I would have made this my entry if it broke to the upside, and I would have made this my entry for a break to, to the downside. Um, so since it broke below this, I would have entered for a put. But again, if it broke above this, I would have entered for a call. Does, does that make sense? Like with the symmetrical, you have to plan for each side. But when it's ascending, you're just planning for the upside. Um, I hope that makes sense. Um, if not, just tell me to explain more. Yeah, gap plays. You can call them gap plays. If you want, basically like a gap and go strategy. Um, they're actually fairly consistent. But when I hear gap strategies, I think of uh, penny stocks. And uh, penny stocks is not something that I trade. I trade, basically I call options the penny stocks of um, le legitimate stocks. Because they move as much as penny stocks, but I'm trading a real stock. Not some bio bio stock that's about to go under all right guys any last questions i don't i don't mind staying on but if not I'll, I'll i'll head out i guess we can do so if you're wondering how i look at stocks for the day before the day of i go to the five day five minute and i just cruise so i go okay Hey, look, this is breaking below uh, pre-market support. We may be bearish on the day for SPY. And then I add that to, to my bearish list. Like, hey, well, I want to trade that. I always want to trade SPY. So that's all, always on my list. Then I go to Amazon. I go, okay, look, we close below here. We're holding under VWAP, maybe bearish on the day. Do I want to trade that? I don't know. I feel like my voice is probably like killing y'all who like to hear a sweet voice because that's not mine. And then I'm also looking, seeing how all the market looks like it closed about the same. And I know that SPY sold off afterwards, and it looks like BABA sold off afterwards. Um, so I would have a bearish assumption for the, for the day. Again, if I'm proven wrong, okay, always plan for both sides. Always, always plan for, plan for both sides. If I have not stressed anything to y'all, it's cut your losses soon and plan for both sides. So we check out ES, and we see that we're still selling off here. So... I'll just go to bed thinking, all right, it looks like we're, we're going to be bearish unless we get above some new highs. Um, take a look at the chat real quick. Do you like... <laughs> okay. Um, do you plan for trades if it doesn't follow? How? Oh, yeah, sorry. That's a question I've been missing. Um When to get out of a position. Okay, so how do I decide when to get out of a position and how do I plan for when it's not a 10% play? When it's not a 10% play, I look for triangles. That's the only thing I do. <laughs> so if it's not classified as a 10% play, then I look for a triangle. <clears throat> hmm, sorry. Um, that's straight up. <laughs> Again, you you can trade other strategies. I gave y'all I gave y'all seven strategies that work extremely well the ones that i like the best that works with my personality are the continuation plays and triangle patterns so if i don't see a continue a continuation play on the day then i'm just waiting for a triangle setup um that's literally the only things i do um now again how do i plan for things that aren't a 10 percent continuation play well then i trade a triangle <laughs> oh how do i know when to get out um so for instance if it's a continuation play um what was a good one? We were mentioning Twitter. So, for instance, uh, this would be a continuation play right here. Um, so, I enter above the pre market high, and then my um, stop is at the pre market. 
it is at the pre-market high. So if we break above this and we don't continue to move to the upside and we start to break below this pre-market high, then, then that's my stop. So basically, I'm getting out where I stop, stopped out at. I'm not giving it room to fall against me. Why? Because on the 10% continuation plays, we already had that sell-off and then the push. Like It's not pushing and selling off and retesting. It's already selling off. Buyers are jumping in and making the price soar. So again, if it breaks above the pre-market high, I enter, and that's also my stop. Um, it's the same thing in reverse. If it breaks below the pre-market low, then I enter. Um, then my pre-market low is the stop as well. Um, that's how I plan uh, for the downside on that. Now when I'm planning for the downside on um, triangle patterns, I'm just going to do this because we had this one. Oh, it was five minutes. Here we go. So when I'm planning for the downside on this, um, what this is from the bottom of the triangle to the top of the tri triangle, in this instance, 145.60 to 145, that's 60 cents. So we're, we're looking for a 60 cent move in either way. So the breakout from here is looking for a, a, a 60 cent move to the upside or a 60 cent move to the downside. So from here, we're, lo we're looking for 140. Hold on, 60 cent move, so that would be 40. Ugh, math, so that'd be to the 60, right? Yeah, so our target would be 144.60 because it's a 60 cent move. If that makes sense to you, the triangle, the tail of the tri triangle where it connects is where you should expect the length. So our target on that, so that's how I know to get out on um, that. Again, what I made a lot more money, yes, but that's how I trade. I trade conserv conservatively with a plan every single time. So wouldn't it be difficult to trade consistently? Because isn't the 10% triangle patterns for the most part don't appear as often? Okay, um, yeah, they don't appear as often. They appear, I would say, maybe um, once a day. Um, but again... The Tim like those plays easily give you fit fifty percent plus twenty five percent plus if you're playing conservatively. So you really only only need to make two of those trades a week in your set. So if you're trading with a thousand, uh, well, it doesn't matter what you're tra trading with. If you trade two two of those on the low end, you're making fifty percent of your money. On the high end, you're making a hundred percent of your money in a week. So it's not about you don't have to trade trade trade. Just trade the best setup. And if you can trade one one, one of those setups a, a week, that's still 25% a week on the low end. Like, that's crazy. Like, so yes, they don't appear as often, but you, you should make a lot, the bulk of your money from that. How does option pricing, options price change when, you, when a stock hits price? Okay, um... So that's because of uh, theta, which is time decay. So even though the stock is back at the same price, well, it's because of all the Greeks really. It's a culmination of volatility, vega, theta, whatever delta you want to talk about. But after it moving, I, I just like to use the example of theta just because it's been a certain amount of time since it's hit that same price point in the stock. So since that's happened, um, there's been theta, there's been time occurring to take the price of that stock and lower it. So that's the reason um, why it's different, uh, Kenny. Um, what good options for tomorrow besides G puts? G puts are almost always a good play. Um, I don't know until the morning. That's when I do all my pre-market analysis. Um, I used to. I used to read order flow. It's not my forte. I'm not the best at it because it's too fast for me. Uh, but I used to I used to read it for spy. Um, if I want to use it, then I mainly use the level twos, um, which I know there are fake orders, so you can fight me on that. But again, I I, I do like to see the the, the level two, um, and the bid and ask. Um, but no, I don't use it at at the moment. I just use ta the tactical uh, analysis aspect of it. I mean, like, how do you know when to actually it after it's made its move sometimes i feel like i'm exiting too early okay yeah that's just part part of the game like i said here 
I would expect a 60 cent move, right? So from here down to 44. So this would have been my exit, right? So right when it hit here, I would have exited my stop, my my price, right? Let's see. Also, I just want to show you for Ryan. Let's see what what's the percentage gain on that. This is at uh, 929. Puts most volume. Um, it's cheap. All right, so this is 929. <laughs> it jumped up. Okay, so right here, a dollar thirty, right? So you enter here. Oh, dang! I didn't know when I was gonna exit. Dang! I should look at that. So nine twenty nine. I was going to ex exit here when it hit this. So nine thirty five is what my perfect trade would have been. Um, what is that? Sorry, I lost it. Nine thirty five. Right here to nine thirty five. Up here. Okay, my bad. Sixteen percent. Um, I still think that's great, but whatever. Um, so so sixteen percent is what I would have gotten. But again, you could have potentially captured six sixty four sixty five percent, right? So that's your question. How do you maximize gains? The thing of it is, we're not. You can't. You can't always catch the full run. We all want to catch the full run, but that's not what good traders do. Good traders trade their setups. The setup is to trade 60 cents and that's it. Now, if you're trading contract sizes that is more than one contract, then you can trade two contracts on, on the breakout, sell one contract here, and then you know set the next uh, contract to sell like uh, up, up here at the break above VWAP, right? So you can capture in some profits and then hold the rest. But I like to sell it all. I like to stay structured. If you don't stay structured or stay disciplined, then you will lose by trying to chase and trying try, trying to get max gains. Yes, maxing out your gains is important, but you will lose in the long run because you're chasing. You don't chase. You don't trade on emotion. You don't trade because you want more. You 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 trade a setup. You enter when it says enter. You don't enter because you say enter, and you exit when the setup says exit. You don't exit because you feel like exiting. You know what I mean? We are acting as robots, playing in a human psychology game. We're not. We're, if we play their game, we lose. We're trading setups so that we can win, not to chase. If that makes sense, I hope that makes sense. But since you're going in with a smaller percentage size, one your profits not be as great. Yeah, so oops, my bad. Um, over the what was the summer? No, it was last semester. I was trading with an average position. Well, I my account size was was around two thousand. Um, and so like like before I'm I'm I made YouTube. I was trading with um like a thousand size, like a thousand dollars per per position size and I was making decent money but then I'd also lose a lot of money so um I started moving my position size down to like 500 and I was doing great with that um like I was doing great with that and then after I noticed that a lot of people on the YouTube um or in the group that I'm or that I have they have smaller accounts I thought I'd do the $500 challenge um and trade smaller sizes um so I'm gonna start taking that seriously now that I'm on break but again um I may be switching over to a larger position size just to start making some money. But again, you can't make money if you can't. I, you can't make a profit if, on a large amount of money if you can't make it on a small amount of money. I mean, yes, I can, but like I haven't been here to do it. Um, so I'm pretty sure I'm just going to grow the 500 and then go back to my normal p p position size of about 1,000 per position. Um, but that's me. Um, that's just what I like to do. So, but not that. All right. Let's see. Wow. Cool. Total views ten. All right. Awesome. Where do you buy at the money out or in? <laughs> I was about to hang up this live stream, but thanks for asking. Um, where do you buy at the money or in the money? 
I always buy out of the money near at the money so that it can go from out of the money to in the money um, quickly and have more. Let's see. I'll show you. Trade. So, for instance, um, in a perfect world. So, yeah. So, I like to buy one, one, one of these two preferably here or here right um so that when i buy and it starts moving in my direction it goes in the money and then i get that um like the the value of the contract increases a lot just because it's now in the money well not a lot but you know what i mean if you if you traded options like the price of the contract will increase some because it's now in the money so not only am i making money from the direction of the move but also because it went in the money so i trade i like to keep my sizes within these first two or three um so that i can start to capture that so that it becomes out of the money to in the money um and i capture that profit that's true when you're trading stocks with not with not a lot of volumes like for instance spy has volume no matter where i go on it but when you're trading small stocks like like GE, for instance, you you can see it in the volume breakdown. See, so look, the volume out here is zero, zero, five, two, three hundred fifty three, and as we get closer and closer to uh, at the money, the volume increases. So when you're trading stocks that don't have a lot a, a lot of options volume, you're kind of forced because of liquidity issues to stay within uh, at the money so that you can actually get in and out of the position. If that makes sense, um, but yeah. Yeah, I got through that. That's perfect. That's how I play it too. Yes. Um, so when it comes down to options, you can. Oops, sorry. When it comes down to options, you can get very specific. Um, uh, like there's, it's not perceived value. It's I forget the exact name. Um, but you know, like you have this value um, of it being a contract. But then you also have a value of it being in the money, which means the contract is actually worth money. And then, so there's two different types of values placed on. I can't tell you the exact name, but if you want to learn exactly more about options and what why it gets more expensive when it's in the money, there's a very good ta technical breakdown from um, Tasty Trades YouTube or Tasty Trades in general. Um, Literally just pull out like again, this is not for options day trading, but if you want to understand options at it at its fullest, um, go to Tasty Trade and watch them. Again, I'm not associated with them, but go to their play playlist and I think I watch Mike's whiteboard whatever. If you can find it, it's Mike and his whiteboard. Mike whiteboard yeah right here mike and his whiteboard options trading concepts um and oh intrinsic value and extrinsic value that that is the the reason behind why um the out the out of the money and and in the money concepts work so if you want to understand that better watch that i can't fully explain thanks for clarifying everything for you True, you can never keep emotions out, but you can keep them disciplined. Training yourself in the battle of the mind is really hard, but it's all about putting restrictions on yourself. Every, like you, you won't get everything perfect the first time, but when you when you lose, you you should be placing more attention on your losing trades than your winning trades. You need to be like, why did I lose? And when you figure out why why you lost, make that make that a rule. Maybe it moved moved in the right way, but you lost because of theta. All right, new rule. I won't trade same day egg expirations. Okay, well I went. I bought a call under VWAP. Okay, new rule. Don't trade against VWAP. You know, like every bad trade you make, make a rule for it. Follow those rules and have like discipline yourself. You have to be very self disciplined. So like if you're um, if you break one of of your rules. Then you have to punish yourself. Be like, all right, I'm not trading for a week or something, What, whatever you like to do. You know what I mean? Um, you just have to win the battle of the mind by either lowering, 
lowering your position sizes so that you don't care about what you have at risk as much, um, or you just set up strict, strict rules and you follow that. No, I do not use the probability of in the money out of the money stuff because that's not what I do. I two contracts will cost you twenty dollars. <laughs> Yes, it's the same until it jumps to and yeah, it's, it's it's the same, Kenny. I did not play any weed stocks. I like to stay away from hype and manipulation. Yes, you can make a lot of good money off of it. For instance, AMD, um, and then um, what is it, the Turtle Shell or the Turtle whatever? Those head, the, those headphones that were associated with Fortnite. That went huge as well. Um, I like to stick with the big name stocks like Amazon, Apple, Spy. Um, just because I know that at the end of the day, they, they will be around. Um, yeah, till, till Ray. Um, it's also like, I don't like stocks that are based purely off volume, um, because it just it does not work well for me. I just can't trade that personally. Correct. Gunther, um, always learn more from your bad trades than, than you do good trades. Like learn, 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 learn. And make rules and everything. CGC and Cron seem promisingly long term. If you sell an option, how do you exit it? Do you have to wait till it expires or exercise? Is there a way to cut losses? Yes, ham hey, rocket me whatever that. Um, no, like it's it's the same thing. If you buy it, then you can immediately sell it. Like you don't have to wait for it to expire or exercise. I've never ever let an options contract expire or exercise on me nor will i i ever um because of theta and like 90 percent of contracts expire worthless so like let's pull up it right here so like and if you've watched some of my like trading rehabs where i show you like 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 what i traded you see a buy order and you see a sell order so like i'll go in right and you let's see this is buy all right so i go in here and i buy or this is on the sell side you buy whatever, how much you want to buy. You buy that, and then now, and now you have it open. You you can go to your put put. You can go to your where is it? Monitor, and you go to activity and positions, and you can close it out there. Or you click on the same strike, and you click on the sell side, um, and, and you sell it. So you don't have to worry about it expiring or exercising. Just know that you want to buy it at a lower price, and then you sell it to make money theoretically we're just flipping contracts like you can flip cars or flip anything um if that makes sense so you just have to make sure that the exact same contract strike price and everything you buy you have to sell that contract back um what else so that's how you cut losses oh when it gets in the money the price is will show up not jump per se, but it does increase, and it's the intrinsic extrinsic value thing mentioned on Tasty Trades. So look at that. Only trade options if you have day trades, to be honest, or you make a cash account and you can always have day trades. All right, guys, thank y'all for tuning in. Um, I know that if you saw this, you were probably subscribed but for those who aren't please subscribe like and comment and join the eco fink that's where most of our the chatter is nowadays since it has all the various features on it all right guys thank y'all for tuning in i'll try to do this when my voice is not as raspy and y'all we can better explain i can get it up i'll try to better explain and learn youtube so that we can work this out better thanks for putting up with all this technical stuff all right guys peace out